I'm out in the shop getting ready to replace the uh, Z axis and the Y axis bellows. The uh, Z axis uh, needs to be replaced as well, which I'll cover in a second. But the Y axis, this is a, apparently a problem with the uh, uh, Tormach typically. Um, what happens is, as the chips build up on the back side of this during machining operations, the chips aren't getting flushed off of the uh, bellows and they build up in between and then when the uh, table moves back and it's not able to compress properly and instead of compressing what it does is it actually tears the plastic support which are these little ribs here with a dovetail uh, slot cut in them instead of um, uh, everything working properly it actually tears this out of the uh, the accordion portion of it so it doesn't work anymore so usually what will happen is it just pop up off the uh, off the table uh, so that it's not laying properly on it anymore. It will be elevated like that. It will be your first indication and then you, you can reach underneath and pop down the, uh, uh, the plastic strip and it will stay on there for a little bit longer. But I figured since I was covering it up, it didn't matter that much, uh, but I wanted to have it in good shape underneath. I figured these bells aren't getting any cheaper, so might as well take care of it now. So that's my purpose there. Now the z-axis, that typically isn't a problem. Uh, however, I was running through the warm-up cycle one day and hadn't considered the position of the vise. Not that the vise was a problem, but it was sitting on the table just like it normally does. And the, uh, the little uh, shield that sits underneath the back slide of the vise that protects the in inner workings of the vise from getting chips, that uh, was sticking out the back because the vise was more closed than it normally was. And what happened? was as it was going through the warm-up cycle that I uh, programmed into it, it uh, came through and just sliced the thing open right through there. So that was a bit of a surprise for me. Um, I didn't realize what was happening because I wasn't at the machine at the time. I was a few feet away. I didn't realize what was happening until it was uh, had already ripped through the thing. So I let it uh, finish the cycle, remove the, uh, the little strip as soon as I could, but I let it finish the cycle. And here we go. Now I got to replace the Z axis uh, bellows as well. Now I will be making a neoprene cover for that, just like I'm making one for the bottom here. And additionally, I'll be making one for the front. Now, Tormach, as of right now, only offers the one for the rear, uh, the rear Y axis bellows. The front typically isn't a problem because the chip tray, just sitting over here right now, this portion of it actually protects that. So when the, the uh, table is out this way, the chips are falling out of that, and then they make their way down between the uh, uh, the chip tray and this guard right here, this stainless steel guard that's on the front side of the table. Make it down between the guard and then sit in this tray and then run off the side so it isn't a problem. However, with the cooling enclosure that I built, I don't have any reason to have that uh, chip tray or chip guard around the uh, table, so that's off. Not to mention the fact that it wouldn't fit in here properly. When it's all the way at the limits, it gets pretty close to the end. And when the shower curtain is in the front, it would also interfere with that. So I took mine off, and next thing I know, I got a problem with chip buildup on the front bellows as well. So I'm going to be building a bellows for the front as well. So I have a sorry bellows cover for the front as well. So I'll have new bellows uh, on the Z and the Y rear, and then I'll have neoprene guards over all three. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. That's a whole bunch of talk and not much action, so I'm going to uh, get to removing parts. All right, taking the Z-bells off is pretty straightforward. There are three uh, bolts, probably M5 at the top, with a uh, four millimeter hex in each. And then the bottom is a little bit different slash annoying. The uh, uh, they weren't bolts, they were screws. Phillips has machine screws with uh, uh, nuts on the inside. They were 8 millimeter hex. What I actually did was I took the uh, bellows cover off and the socket wrench from the top while holding it from the bottom uh, with a Phillips right angle screwdriver here. So you see my uh, chip buildup on the uh, dovetail there and all the crud that's inside it. So that's all, that's all from that split. So that gives you an idea of the fact that the uh, bells cover does a pretty good job protecting it, uh, except where it's cut. There you have it. Now would probably be a good time to uh, check the tightness of the uh, ball screw components inside, which I'm going to be doing next. 
All right, a couple things at this point. First of all, I decided I needed to check to be sure that the housing holding the ball screw together on the Z axis was tight. I've heard that in some cases they can be loose, so I decided to snug them up. Uh, four millimeter hex on the end of, uh, it's like a 10, uh, 10 inch or maybe foot long extension and a six inch, six inch extension. And it must be a 10 and a six, judged by the size. Uh, here, that was able to reach it. Uh, one thing I was sure to do was put one of those generally annoying self-locking uh, socket holders uh, on the low point so that the socket, uh, the nut driver, whatever you want to call this, didn't get stuck down on the uh, on the bolts. I found that they were not loose as much as they were just not, they didn't feel very snug. So I don't have a good feeling about the whole, uh, the way they're torqued, whether they were assembled dirty or not. I, I don't know how that feels. So maybe in the future if I do a tear down on the machine, I'll uh, I'll review the uh, the torque values then. But didn't feel good. I probably got uh, 20 or 30 degrees of rotation out of each of them without even really trying. Uh, it just doesn't feel like I think a fastener should feel when you're torquing it down. I don't know what sort of materials I'm dealing with um, for the ball screw assembly. And I don't know the quality of the fastener as far as the, uh, the thread form is concerned. So I wasn't convinced that I should torque it too much. Afraid I may strip something out. So uh, I gave them a snug, probably uh, 20 to 30 degrees on each. And they, they easily took it. It was less than, uh, less than 20 foot pounds of torque, I'd say, uh, in order to achieve that number. Second thing, I decided to uh, revise my method of assembly based on what I learned taking it off. And I put the this angle bracket on before I, I'm even installing the uh, the bellows cover in place. I figured it would be easier than trying to screw around with this uh, the, the whole nut assembly. That was kind of ridiculous. So instead of messing with that, I'm going to do it this way and then all I have to do is attach the, uh, uh, the two screws directly into the casting of the column. So that should be it. This should be pretty quick. Uh, now, I'll just be sure I got the uh, uh, dovetails clean, see a little bit of debris on there from me messing around. Uh, but that should be it. Should be able to close this up shortly. With the Z-axis bellows replaced, it's time to tackle the Y-axis rear bellows. It's easy enough, there are uh, three Phillips head screws on either end. Uh, they are machine thread screws with a, a number one head, so it's, it's as simple as just getting in there with, at the right angle and working them out. Nothing, nothing to even think about here, really. Just getting uh, removed, and then all you got to do is pull the bells off, which I'll show you how that goes in a little bit. So both the front and rear screws are loose, and now all that's required is that you reach underneath and pop the bellows off of the ways. In this case, this one's so damaged it comes off fairly easily, and that's it. And I can take a look underneath. Seems sort of rust you have collecting. Hopefully none. So with the bells removed we can now pretty clearly see the damage that has occurred to them. The, uh, the corners get bent over when they get forced up off the uh, off the dovetail and then the plastic supports get torn out of the uh, the rubber bellows portion of it here. So this is this is how it started to fail and uh, so it indicated to me that I knew I needed a new one. So that's it. That's the uh, bellows. All right, here's the easiest technique I found to get the bellows cover on the rear y-axis without much stress. Just put the uh, bellows cover in the back and then rotate each individual section around. I have to reposition it a little bit. To move, but that's the basic idea. Take it from the back. Down. Before the installation of the Y-axis bellows, the rear bellows is complete. Now is the time, if you want to, to tighten up the bolts holding the ball screw housing together in the event that they're loose. So I haven't checked mine ever, and I figured it'd be worth it to uh, check out the Y-axis here so you see if everything is held together the way it should be. So let me snug those up. The Y-axis rear bellows is in place, along with the Z-axis bellows, and the only thing left to do now is install the neoprene covers. Of course, that's going to be the slow part. The 
uh, components that bolt right on. That was the easy part. So I've got to figure out exactly how I'm going to do this and then do it. So here we go.